Greetings in the name of the Lord our God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. What a time of life, what a joy, what a privilege to be called by the name of the Lord our God. We're so grateful for the opportunity and the privilege and the honor to lift up the name of the Lord our God. More so to belong to his kingdom. To be considered as the associates of the God kind. Praise God. <laughs> what a joy, what a joy, what a joy, what a joy. We all know that uh, God in his omniscient wisdom has oftentimes spoken to us through his son Christ Jesus, who in sundry times spake to our forefathers by the prophets, but in these last days speaks to us through his son Christ Jesus, so that we may say we are children and sons of the Most High God. He mentioned a few words, servants, children, sons, Hairs, praise God. And every one of them have different dimensions to our sense of belonging in the kingdom of God. He says, no longer do I call thee servants, but henceforth I call thee friends. So he is also considered as friends. Jesus is considered as our elder brother. <laughs> the firstborn of all creation, praise God. He says... He no longer calls us servants, but henceforth thou shalt be known as friends. So we are his friends. In another dimension, he calls us children to as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Uh, Behold what manner of love the Father has shown unto us that we may be called the children of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has shown unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has shown unto us, that we may be called the sons of God. So we are called sons of God at the same time. To as many as are led by the, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has shown unto us, that we may be called the children of God. And uh, henceforth I call thee no longer servants, but thou art friends. All those are dimensions of our different uh, realms and spheres and the dynamic relationship betwixt God and us in his kingdom. Praise God. And each has a realm of operation, each one of them. But we'll come to that today, not quite that. But now we are qualified to that by reason of the blood covenant. We are qualified as sons, servants, children, um, brethren, you know, brethren, uh, kings and priests, heirs of salvation, all of those dimensions in the kingdom of God. And each has a realm of operation or a sphere of influence. Praise God. So we are recipients of the eternal kingdom by reason of the blood covenant. The redeeming blood of Jesus has qualified us to be mentioned, called, or considered as all of the aforementioned. Praise God. Servants, children, sons, heirs, kings, priests, brethren. Praise God. And so all of these are very interesting uh, dynamics, all by the blood of Jesus. Now, uh, we'll continue on the book of uh, Genesis chapter 5. Ladies and gentlemen, watching from different parts of the world, we have been on the cities, the redeeming blood, or the blood covenant. God bless you, Pastor Badiah. Uh, come out all the way from the U.S. Lorraine. God bless you, Apostle Elaid. Adams Karaoke, God bless you. Mary Wangui, God bless you. And every one of you that I may not be watching and seeing on the screen right now, coming and watching from different parts of the world. As we start, please share 
the broadcast. Share the broadcast on your page. Share the broadcast on other groups. Send the word to as many as, as can receive the word. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the reading of the scripture tonight. Once again, we bless your name for this is the day of the revelation of your word, the blood covenant. Lord, we understand the efficacy of the word of God. The eternal efficacy of your word, washing us in, the, uh, uh, in our sins, cleansing us of our iniquities, forgiving us of our sin, and Lord, forgiving us of our transgressions. Your blood has brought it away and has wiped away, removed, literally blotted away all of our sin, sins, iniquities, and transgressions. All of that which was a manifestation of the Adamic nature, you have literally blotted it away, you have wiped it away, you have swept it away. Behold, what a privilege and what a, uh, an honor to be considered as sons of the Most High God, children of the Most High God, sons, uh, kings, and priests, brethren, praise God. Uh, glory be to God, the highest place. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy great, exceeding great reward. I spoke about this in the previous broadcast. I'm not going to continue on the same. I'm not going to repeat that. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go Charles, and the steward my house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born of my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine hair, but uh, he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine hair. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Praise God. We said here, this is the KJV English, a little complicated to some of you or some of us. But simply means God pulled him out and told him to look up to the stars. Look at the bright uh, hosts of the heavenly, uh, starry hosts of heaven. And he told him that as many stars as you can count, so shall your seeds be. It means they will be exceedingly great, numerous in number, without number, in other words. Praise God. And uh, he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness by him having faith, having received the word of God by faith and believed in the same, God credited it to his account as righteousness. God accounted to him as righteousness or God considered it as righteousness. And so the righteousness of God in us didn't just begin two millennia ago. But this is a process that began too, uh, too many years ago, very many years ago. We see God bequeathing his own righteousness in Abraham. He considered him by reason of his belief, by reason of his faith and confidence in the promise as righteousness. Today, we are clothed with the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because of our belief and because of our faith and confidence in the eternal word of God. When we confess the Lordship of Christ, we became a new creation. And therefore, we exemplified and exhibited the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we are the righteousness of God today in Christ Jesus by reason of the cleansing of blood. When the blood forgave us, when the blood cleansed us, when the blood redeemed us and ransomed us, when the blood appropriated us and remitted us, our sins were remitted. Therefore, we are considered as righteous, not by our own effort or works, but because of the redeeming blood of Jesus, because of the cleansing blood of Jesus, because of the purchasing blood of Jesus, because of the forgiving blood of Jesus, because of the remitting blood of Jesus, of Jesus. Therefore, we are forgiven and considered righteous. So he clothed us in that process with his own righteousness. Praise God. Eternal righteousness. Efficacious righteousness. Supernatural divine righteousness in the order 
and the likeness of his image in the image heavenly in the in other words in, in, in the in after the nature of god after the divine nature of god praise god so this righteousness qualifies us to stand before the very presence of god without the sense of guilt now these words are also are very independent and quite very close uh, justified we are justified and therefore you are righteous by reason of being justified praise god being acquitted uh, being uh in other words being considered guiltless so you have been rendered guiltless you have been forgiven you have been acquitted and therefore you have been justified by that blood of preparation and therefore you are clothed with his own righteousness righteousness praise god righteousness when the foundation of the uh, righteous is faulty uh, surely what will they do so our foundation is solid our foundation is christ the rock the immovable unshakable solid consistent um a stable immovable, immovable consistent unshakable immutable unchangeable stable foundation christ the rock praise god and so the scripture continues and he believed in the lord and he counted it to him for righteousness praise god and he said unto him i'm the lord thy uh, the lord god that brought thee out of the wood of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it remember when god revealed himself to abraham he revealed himself to Abraham as, number one, El Shaddai. As Jehovah El Shaddai. The omniscient, omnipotent, the all-sufficient, the all-knowing, the self-existent, the self-existing one. Without beginning, without end. The eternal one who lives all by himself. Praise God who does not proceed from time or proceed from any other existential agenda. He's self-existent, self-existing, and all-sufficient, omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, all-wise, omnipresent, all-present at all times, everywhere, every time. The vast expanse of his domain and his uh, presence is to be found in entirety of his creation. That's why David one time said, If thou wherein shall I hide from thine presence, O Lord, if I am make mine abode in Sheol, in Hades, thou art there. In the depths of the earth, thou art there. If I make mine abode on the mountain peaks, thou art there. If I make man abode in heavenly places, thou art there. Wherein shall I hide from thine presence, O God? Praise God. Means he is everywhere and he watches over us and he knoweth our frame and he takes care of every detail of our lives. As a matter of fact, don't forget, if you are the apple of his eye, then he looks through you. Because when Jesus brought the nigh unto God, God sees thee through Jesus. Praise God. The perfection of his beauty, the excellence of his pride. And so therefore also at the same time, you engraved in the palm of his hand. Therefore he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Lo, unto the end of the age, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You are the eternal excellence you are the pride unto many generations. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm loving every bit of this. And so the scripture says, I'm the Lord that brought thee out of the Ur of the Chaldees, separated thee and got thee out of the worshippers of the moon, got you out of the bondage, got out of the familiar grounds of your forefathers, out of all your ignorance and bleakness and darkness and hopelessness. I am the Lord thy God who literally lifted thee and brought thee out of all that 
to perform my purpose in your life. And God is reminding him as Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah El Elyon, the lofty highest one, Jehovah Adonai, the sovereign God, who has the right to choose as he wills. And he operates and does all things according to his counsel. Praise God. He has the sovereign. He is sovereign because he has the bona fide right to exercise his sovereign will. He calls whomsoever he calls. He blesses whomsoever he blesses. He lifts whomsoever he lifts. He graces whomsoever he graces. He empowers whomsoever he empowers. He strengthens whomsoever he strengthens. He favors whomsoever he favors. Praise God. And we can't question with that. We'll be dealing with that when we come to the dimensions of the foreordination and uh, predestination and justification and foreknowledge. We'll be dealing into all those dynamics when we come to that. Praise God. And it says here, <clears throat> <clears throat> And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old. Praise God. Take me a heifer of three years old. And a she got of three years old. And a ram of three years old. And a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Everything was fresh. Everything was supple. Everything was uh, without blemish. Everything was uh, decent and everything was excellent that God uh, called for him to sacrifice or to bring forth. A heifer, uh, three years old. A she goat, three years old. A ram, three years old. And a turtle dove and a p young pigeon, praise God. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. The birds, the pigeon, he did not divide. Uh, but uh, the other pieces of animals were slain into two, were cut into twain, in other words. And uh, then, and when the sun was going down, that must have been an evening time, a deep uh, sleep fell upon Abram. I remember sharing with us a supernatural sleep called Tadema. Deep trance, we see the same happening in Abraham's life. We saw the same happening in the life of uh, Peter. If you recall that in the book of Acts, uh, while a sheet of paper like appeared before him and had all kinds of animals, and Jesus spoke to him and said, reach out and slay. You recall all that. He was in a trance in that time. He fell into a trance when he was praying about three o'clock in the evening. <laughs> and so sometimes it's important for us to, to rest because in our rest, in our deep sleep, God speaks to us, even as our organs uh, rest and our body becomes rejuvenated. It's absolutely important for us to rest. It's important for our bodies to have some sleep. Very imperative, praise God. And uh, then we see, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him, uh, meaning that he was in deep, 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 deep uh, trance, all right? And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with a great substance, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark, and behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river of the uh, Euphrates. The Canaanites and the Kenites and the Katmonites and the Hattites and the Perizzites and the Rephims and the Amorites, and the Canaanites and the Gilshites and the Jebusites. Praise God. 
Now, something very interesting I want to bring us to you, uh, I want to bring to your attention kindly, ladies and gentlemen, watching from different parts of the world. This promise wasn't quite fulfilled in its entirety of the stretch of the vast expanse, endless expanse of lands that God promised Abraham. You see here, very clear, it says, up to the river Euphrates, that's where somewhere in Iraq, or perhaps, and Iran, and even Syria, all of that territory was promised to Abraham and his descendants. Even in the golden age of King David, they quite did not occupy the entirety of that land. When they came from the Egyptian bondage and occupied the promised land, they didn't occupy the entirety of this land as promised. Why? The level of their obedience determined the level of their occupation. I mean, the, the size of the occupation, praise God. And they didn't quite obey God fully. They didn't even, uh, uh, they did not uh, drive away all of these Perizzites, Canaanites, Jebusites, etc., etc. And once they reached over there, they began to seek their own ways. And so they were limited in occupying the entirety of the promise of God. And they occupied a shrunken part, a very measly part, very small part. But there will be a time, I believe in the reign of the millennium, that this promise will be fulfilled in its entirety. So is it God's problem? No, God never has a problem at all. God speaks and he fulfills his word. But we also have a part to play. If, you keep, if we keep living in constant rebellion and constant, of course, I know the scripture succinctly says, Thou art ascended on high, and give gifts unto men, and give gifts even to the rebellious. Even unto the rebellious you give gifts. All right? Because grace covers. But for us to occupy the entirety of it, I also believe that there is a level of our full obedience. And when our obedience is full, we'll be able to occupy the fullness of his exceeding glorious promises given to us word in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Jesus, praise God. And so let me explain uh, this a little bit here. So God tells him to bring a heifer, a turtle dove, a goat, uh, uh, a pigeon, etc. Et and they're all cut into twain except for the pigeon. I did explain to us, and then it will not be grievous for me to explain again. God simply used the practice that was in motion in the then world to exhibit and exemplify and cut his covenant with Abraham. He used that which was familiar with Abraham in their customary practice. All truth is parallel. So in the then world, they'll cut these pieces of animals and they will have the blood drip a wildest. They will walk in them in the direction making uh, the infinite kind of movement of figure eight. You move like that and the blood drips over you and then you'll be swearing words and you'll be uh, making an oath and you'll be giving promises, praise God. And we see the same exactly happening here. The shedding of the blood, uh, an oath taken, uh, the promises being given. And God declares promises. And God begins to release promises. Praise God. And, and then he seals his covenant betwixt himself and um, in Abraham by walking in form of a bright torch through the slain animals. So in this case, God was adequate enough to perform the entire process without Abraham having to go through the cut animals himself. Why? God was sovereign, and Abraham was to trust him good enough, and he would keep his word. And so God went through those dripping animals as the blood dripped literally, and the blood sealed the covenant. So three things, the shedding of the blood, the oath, 
uh, the promise take place. So we see uh, God decreeing and declaring and assuring him that surely in blessing he'll bless him. And, 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 and God uh, making promises. Praise God. And God proves to Abraham that he means business and he means every word and he is not missing any promise or word. He means exactly what he says. And then this covenant is sealed by words. He promises him the vast endless uh, lands. He promises him blessings. He promises him great uh, uh, descendants and all that. Praise God. And this was to be fulfilled many years later. The process of God's redemption began uh, physically in the human realm in the Garden of Eden, like I said, when God slay a lamb himself and uh, out of the skin of the lamb, he covered them and the blood was shed. And we saw the same in Noah when he sacrificed the animals. Uh, no, uh, Abel, praise God. Second part is Abel. He sacrificed animals while his brother Cain sacrificed um, farm produce. And we also see Noah doing exactly that after the flood. He sacrificed certain clean animals and blood was shed. And then we see now uh, this happening to Abraham, the beginning of the surety of the proper redemption, revelation, understanding of the covenant. Because Abraham is considered as the first man to be called the Hebrew. You read the scriptures. Abraham is considered as the man called the first, uh, the first man to be declared the Hebrew. Abraham the Hebrew. And God tells him out of his loins there will be physical offsprings. His descendants will be called a special people and a special generation. A peculiar people. A blessed people called unto God himself. Praise God. Now we see a uh, similar practice by David, etc., etc. Uh, we see the same practice again by Solomon when he was dedicating the temple. Uh, he sacrificed so much, uh, he slayed so much uh, animals and blood was spilled and, 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 and God was, uh, God promised him and God spoke to him and the word of the Lord came to pass in Solomon's life. Now, all of this was the precursor and was uh, the preparation of what was to take place in reality through Christ Jesus. And so the coming of the Christ now brings the proper understanding and the real uh, fulfillment of the shadowy practices culminating in his ultimate sacrifice as the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world and was physically slain on the cross and shed his blood. And this is absolutely fantastic and you don't want to miss the next broadcast. Praise God. God bless you. What a joy. What a privilege as we uh, dwell on the redemption series, on the blood Redeeming blood series on the redemption plan of God, the blood covenant. The Lord bless you and keep you. I believe you've been thoroughly been blessed. So share the broadcast to as many groups as you can and share it on your page and share it on Messenger. Share it on uh, WhatsApp. Share it in every platform that you can. Praise God. We are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb of God, the sinless Flawless Lamb of God. Praise God. Jesus Christ is our Passover. His blood is sacrifice. At three o'clock when he finally closed his eyes and gave up the ghost. And the blood was streaming all through in seven different spots. Which will be enumerating in the next broadcast. Praise God. 
then we'll understand why the blood. And we'll understand the efficacy of the blood. And how the blood has qualified us in the beloved to be called the redeemed of the Lord. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't shut your mouth. Don't be quiet. Let the earth rejoice and let the people be glad. And let all creation know that the blood of Jesus that speaks better things that the blood of Abel hath redeemed thee, cleansed thee, and has brought thee nigh unto God to be called the sons and daughters of the Most High God. And more than that, as kings and priests unto our God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Love you all. Take care. We'll be back tomorrow again. We are available on YouTube. You can get all our broadcasts in YouTube on uh, and Instagram and WhatsApp and FB Live. God bless you and keep you. You are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. And so you are the beloved in the Lord. And you're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And according to his power, he had given thee all things that pertain to life and godliness. By that blood, we are bold. By that blood, we are victorious. And by that blood, we walk in all the exceeding glorious promises given to us, Lord, in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Thank you.